Um, do, 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 do. I think that's pretty much everything. Um, okay, so as I said, a little bit of background and just going on and just kicking off as well is that these events have come about through myself and Don spending a little bit too much time together and, um, you know, and getting to a point where we want to share this knowledge and certainly Don's. It's interesting to see a, a difference in the, the people who have been here for business as opposed to the ones coming here for Don's wealth and investment and shares and property seminars. And so it's, it's interesting to see a diverse crowd coming along. Okay, so anyway, let's kick off the story. So first of all, and I might try and bring that a bit closer, it's not going to work. Let's talk about a couple of things. So who recognises this bloke, yeah? So does anybody want to take a guess? Actually, you can comment online if you want, and comment in the comments if you recognise this guy. Now, so we all know who this guy is, don't we? Is it, you know, he's, there's no question about it. And actually, we all know, uh, most of us, most of us <laughs> know this bloke as well. Um, now, what have we got in common with those two blokes? They're quite diverse. They're from different countries and they live in different worlds, you know, in terms of where they are with their mindset and everything. But both those guys have collected a few bucks, you know, and put it, stacked them away. And, uh, and another guy, and that's, well, that's actually me. So for 10 years, I lived on a boat in the Whit Sundays, and that wasn't a typical day. That was an outstanding day, but the others were pretty much like that. Now, I lived a lifestyle, no question about it, but along the way managed to sort of stack up a few coins and uh, even more so of late. So um, when I talk about business, remember always that I'm coming from a lifestyle aspect, that it's, I'm not here to coach you on, you know, working so hard and 40, 50, 60 hour weeks at the grind and, try, and then therefore getting a result in your life and your business and your wealth from just working your ass off. You know, I've got, and actually I've got a friend in the audience here who met me in the Corumban surf break and, um, and so she can attest the fact that I actually spend quite a good deal of my time these days in my van parked in the Corumban Alley car park looking out across the surf for those perfect conditions before it's time to paddle out, isn't it, <laughs> Suzanne, eh? And, and uh, like we were well, just yesterday, what are we doing there on a Tuesday anyway? Now that's another question, obviously. Um, anyway, so let's talk about what these people have got in common. Has anybody got some ideas about any of those? Does anybody see many commonalities in terms of what those people have in common? So talking Richard Bramson, um, my learner friend up the back, Don, uh, and myself. Is it, has anybody got any ideas about what's in common between those people? No? You had no idea. <laughs> well, that, that's one thing. Um, but it's, it's more simple than that, is that um, the, the tagline around this sort of part of it is Look, we're all born of a certain situation. I attest, uh, from what I understand, Bramson um, didn't come from a great deal of wealth. He came from an okay situation. Uh, Don, I know, grew up at Manly. I grew up at Anala. Now, all three of those people have achieved various different levels of wealth. And uh, obviously, Bramson and the Elong Musk of the world have, have climbed to the, the lofty heights. Um, Don's done quite well, and I'm doing quite okay as well. But what I put it to you is there's not a great deal different between any of us. We've all had a lifetime, we've all got a brain, we've all applied ourselves and achieved some sort of level of success as a result of that. So what I put it to you is even though there's you know, the three people from various parts of the world there, and we can pick out a whole bunch of others, can't we, that are successes in, in what we believe are around the world, but they're, they're not actually a great deal different. You know, do, is it as though I'm any smarter, really, than anyone else? I mean, we know Don holds four degrees in mathematics and so Is it five, Don? I don't know. Four, just four. four, just four degrees. So, look, he's probably smarter than the average bear. And Bramson, is he any... Look, if you read his biography, he spent most of his upbringing um, smoking weed and going to concerts, you know, and just got around to starting a print media business or a, a, a rock and roll magazine and then went offshore with records and radio, didn't he? So he was just cunning as a fox, I'd put it, you know. So I don't see that any of those people really share any magnificent or huge difference in terms of who they are. They're not rocket scientists. You know, they're not outstanding in terms of intelligence. They've just been able to apply themselves, weasel that, and, put, and, apply, and maybe apply themselves to a mindset of just, I'm going to get ahead somehow, I'm going to make this work. So, some more than others. Does that make sense? So that's, that's a really big takeaway from when, so what I'm putting to you is anybody here can start a business. There's nothing really making you guys any different to me, to Bramson, to Don Kerr, to the Elon Musk, to uh, Bezos, to 
to any of the wealthy people you want to think about in the world. You know, um, uh, who's that guy with all the, uh, that does all the share investing? Berth Berkshire Hathaway. Look, another wealthy bloke. Is he really that much smarter? No, he's just applied himself, learned a lot, made some good decisions over and over again. You too can do that, yeah? You too can do that. Anyway, let's move along. Let's have some fun. So anyway, hopefully that's opened you up to the idea that possibly you can go on and, and make a business. Okay, so let's talk about some of the benefits now. Um, oh, we've got the right slide there as well. Um, so it, that's, it's all right, that's fine. And um, so the, let's talk to the, each of those bullet points there. So uh, freedom, freedom's a big one for me, as you've already seen in the photos. Uh, I feel that uh, having your own business gives you a lot more freedom. Um, quite obviously, if you're then therefore in control of your business and your destiny, you've actually got, you're able to make decisions based upon how much freedom you do or don't want. So those are there for you to decide on yourself. Uh, taxation, and that's with an accountant in the room, um, you can verify for me, a small business person has a good deal more leverage to write things off, do they not? Yeah, that's right. Now let's play with that one because that's one of my favourites. If we can click to the whiteboard show. So, and uh, as I said, call me out if you think I'm, I'm out, of, uh, out of order here. But for a long time, and this is actually one of the flaws in my attitude towards business. I was a guy that always believed in having a taxable income of zero. Now that's flawed, isn't it, Brian? Don? You know, tax is not a bad thing. Well, but yeah, I, I just ran past the turn off to QBT Hospital. They put a plate in my shoulder five weeks ago. Public system. If we want to have those services, I drove on a decent road. Somebody yeah. got paid for them. That's right, there you go. So taxation is not a bad thing. And Don, in recent weeks, of course, has said, look, if you had to pay, you know, if you had a tax bill of $100,000, wouldn't that be a terrible thing? Imagine Yeah, imagine if you had a tax, a tax bill of a million dollars. Probably my colleague here, Brian, would be able to guess what that mean in terms of your income. You probably, that's a company. I had a client years ago, he was a manager, a state manager, section, yeah, unfortunately because of his employee share plan from Turing, he had a tax blow, a million dollars. I would have loved to have been him. Yeah, poor fellow, poor fellow for the million dollar tax thing. But anyway, let's play it out for the, for the small business and where you kick off. Um, and this is, uh, let's uh, play with this a little bit. So, say as a PAYG employee, you're earning, um, say, $100,000. What's the tax on that, approximately? That's about $25,000, is it not? Yeah, about 25, so PAYG, so if you're employed, your tax bill is about 25K, yeah? Now, in business, and, and I've been cheeky for a long, long time around this stuff, and I said, I welcome Brian to call me out on this, but um, let's look at the sorts of things you, ta you get as a tax deduction or as a small business operator. Um, vehicles. Vehicles is a big one. And what's the ruling at the moment, uh, Brian? It's, if, is it over? Oh, okay, no, that's fair enough. Uh, because you've probably got a totally different attitude. Yeah, okay, fair enough, I'll leave you out for now. But anyway, in terms of vehicles, um, as uh, you may well know, is if you create a logbook that shows that your business usage is at a certain level, um, you know, for instance, so that Sprint event legitimately is used at 90% for, you know, business and my business place of business, so therefore I write off 90% of the repayments on that. So that's roughly, let's take, uh, it's, it's, let's say it's $1,000 a month, that's, that's 12 grand, so that's, that's um, what's 90% of that anyway? Oh, let's, let's just go about nine grand, for just for round figures. So tax deduction of $9,000 right there, okay? Um, office, part of my space here, it's only a small bit in this particular property, but as a percentage of my rent is taken off and charged back to the business as, as, um, as rent, so even if that's uh, $3,000 per annum. I'm gonna just make a pick of these numbers out of the hat. Um, telephone and internet, business-wise. So that's where you spend about 100 bucks, or maybe less than that, I think. So that's just put in 1,200. And whatever else you can come up with. So attending conferences, doctors are famous for going to conferences and they love doing that because they tend to find a way to make that a write-off, I find. Now, has anybody else got some other ones that they want to insert in here that, how about computers? I mean, if you want to get really cheeky about it, then such things as um, 
as uh, some of your consumables around the house, your coffee pods or uh, some of your consumables around the thing, so your milk and coffee type thing. And then so depending how you go, there's a various number of things you can do so that all these things come off your taxable income before you go and see your accountant and say, okay, let's get, let's get my accounting in, so, or get my taxation done. So let's just say, for instance, so that 90, even in this formula, is, is coming down to about $85,000. Now that's going to make a bit of a difference in terms of how much tax you're going to pay. Does that make some sense? So that's one of my, so that's one of the big things. I, and what's nice about this, and, and um, I'll be transparent around it, there's certainly some things I've been cheeky about in the past with my taxation. Now as I've earned more money, you go, you know what, I don't need to cut corners on this one. I don't need to. Let's put some more money into the hospitals and the roads, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it, you know. Whereas the, the people that do things to minimise their tax, legitimately, do go to the nth degree. So that's one thing there. So um, back to the slideshow if you don't mind. Um, helping others, and I've got that in there. Now that's at number four, I've got that. But in my world, that's, that's a pretty important one. And if you've actually believed within your, you know, and I think everybody has that belief within themselves at some level, is that they want to help others. Now, and, and it's one of those purely altruistic things. And at this level in my business, you know, within the staff bracket, for instance, you know, I've got two great guys that work for me. Um, one is Mary Lynn, she works for me from Canada. I've known her for eight years. I've taught her so much of what I know about creating websites and doing a search engine optimization and everything else about programming and software. Now, she's uh, married with a three-year-old or four-year-old, I'll probably be corrected in the morning, a four-year-old child who's, who's, you know, so she's a stay-at-home mother. And from that, she's able to you know, I'm paying her extremely well. In fact, I just gave her a pay rise. I said, look, you know, you've certainly got to a level after four years with me, you've gone to the next level in terms of your skills and abilities. So give yourself a little extra, a bit of extra money. I'm fine with that. So let's go with that. So by actually looking after, helping others, there is, is a, a really big part of who I am. And so that's one instance for the staff member. Now, the other member of my staff, and he's turned out to be a, a real treat, is a guy by the name of Corey. And he lives out in the Redlands. He's my content writer, and he came to me some two years ago when he's a graduate journalist, wanting to go into a career of journalistic technical writing, like writing manuals and stuff. Anyways, about six months ago, after I've taught him of the ways and means of creating content for websites and how you do it in such a way for effectiveness on Google, et cetera, et cetera, he's actually become a really, really effective member of my team. And as a result, you know, I pay him well for that, pay him well above the award rate that he'd otherwise be paying. And he said to me about six months ago, he says, John, you've spoiled me. You've ruined me for life. Which was very pleasing for me to hear, wasn't it? Because he says, I'll never be able to work in the field that I thought I'd want to work in because I, um, I just love this so much. I'm able to work from home. In fact, I go with my dog down to the waterfront and work from just a, a barbecue table down in the, down at the waterfront. Um, and he's taking forward those skills and that mentoring that I've provided him. Um, and he's even in a position now where he's saved enough money, he's trying to buy a house and that stuff. As is Mary Lynn, I'm coaching them like, come on guys, let's buy a house. You know, if you don't need me, that's okay. I want to see you guys succeed. So in lieu of having any children, I've got a couple of really fabulous staff work for me. And it's really, really a positive thing. Um, and further on from that, helping others, like the other one is clients. Like I've got to a point now where um, with my marketing business, so eCentral, and I've been as I said, creating websites and doing search engine optimization, general marketing, social media, video um, for the past 22 years, is that through my clients, I've had a whole range of guys and I've had a full change of mindset around this, uh, which I'll go into in a, a little bit further down track in terms of this presentation. But I got to the point with the clients now where I want to see them succeed. So I've got two pest control businesses run by very, very good people. Um, and I've got a, a plumbing business and he's really going for it. He's in his mid-40s, he's got eight guys on the road and he's it's just a really, really good guy to hang around with. I don't get to see them often, but geez, I love it when I do. 
Um, who else have we got? I think so there's a storage business uh, and there's a, a building inspection and pest, uh, pest inspection business for pre-purchase -pre -pre um, inspections. All these guys, I believe in absolutely, you know, and part of my brand and my business is that it's called Queensland's Best. The, the, my group of clients are called Queensland's Best. And part of that is that I truly believe these are Queensland's best businessmen and I really believe in the businesses and I hold them accountable to that as well. Like I won't have a client on my books that hasn't got anything less than a 4.9 star approval rating on Google or other platforms. Like if they start collecting bad reviews, I'll be asking questions and I'll be headed for the door. Now in terms of your employers, those who are here that work, do you feel that strongly about the business that you work for? Are you, is, you know, the business you work for, is it a five star or 4.9 star business? You know, if you look at the reviews on Seek or something like that, or just general reviews for the various different types of businesses out there, I'm pretty sure you'll find that, yeah, there's, the larger the company, the harder it is for them to maintain a top reputation. But um, I'm, a, as I said, hold my clients accountable for that. So in terms of helping others, what does it mean? It means that I believe in my clients and I believe in them succeeding. And they're all family men, happily married, children in, in schools, private schools, I mean, let's face it, they do need a dollar to actually fund that lifestyle and that, those choices they've made in their life. And so I'm happy to help promote their businesses and help them grow within their marketing so that they do succeed. Make some sense? Helping others, big one for me. Um, do, 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 do. Wealth from nothing. Now, we've had in terms of the, the, uh, the uh, conversation from Donna, maybe I'll go back to the, white, the whiteboard if you don't mind there. Um, uh, there's, and we'll talk about sort of types of businesses in a minute, but um, you know, Don's uh, great and we know from any sort of wealth creation mindset is that from the age where you start work, so let's say you t start at age 21 and you go to 65, any reasonable sort of investment strategy, and Don does this virtually every week, he'll remind you that you've got to start early so you, and you get a curve that well, it doesn't quite that, go quite that exponential, but it's representative, I guess. <laughs> the, um, uh, but as a, so your actual uh, wealth here at retirement is what it is. Now, who's probably the most famous, is a question and there's an obvious answer, who's probably the most famous guy globally that started at 65 to become a very wealthy man? Anybody want to have a go? Started, he was a businessman throughout his life. No, I'll keep giving you, I'll keep giving you tips until you get it. He was born in 1890. I, I checked his Wikipedia before I started. He went, lived through the depression. He operated restaurants. In the end, he ended up sleeping in his car, driving around the US, trying to sell his fried chicken recipe. The Colonel. The Colonel. The Colonel at 65, was pretty much destitute, yeah? But he was committed. <laughs> committed to the point that he was driving around the countryside with a fried chicken recipe and a, and a method for making the best fried chicken around with a pressure cooker. And he managed to get people on board to actually buy the recipe and sign on to his franchise for that. So. The big deal here with, with a business is, this, is that opportunity, as I said, of creating something from nothing. Um, I know I've got someone in the online audience today, uh, and she, 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 uh, she was working as a cleaner. I said, why aren't you, why haven't you just started your own cleaning business? And that's some of the advice I gave her a couple of years ago. And pleasingly, uh, it was about a month ago, she contacted me and said, John, I've finally taken the plunge. I've started my own cleaning business and I am inundated. <laughs> I am so incredibly busy with cleaning work because I do a great job and so I'm getting referrals and I'm building a, a very successful and, a, and a, a business of my own control. She's picking and choosing the clients she cleans for. And I'll come back to the whole cleaning type business in a little while. But so, as I said, you can start anywhere. I mean, you've got to be pretty committed, but you can start from nothing. Now, arguably, I'd even say at around about 50, we'll call that spot there, I was doing okay, had a few bucks, not a lot, but I had, and I had a couple of uh, properties that were drilling a hole in my pocket because they were negative geared 
and my taxation was very low at that point but I put it to you that in the past three or four years and these and a whole bunch of other books some coaching some commitment going to weekly business events that I was able to change my mindset and and I'll get around to some of the punchline stuff around that fairly shortly but I basically started from scratch not quite scratch but from a very low point in my wealth position to now be doing quite well thank you very much and that really changed came from a mindset shift and we'll get we'll go more to that in a little while okay so wealth and nothing does that make sense you don't need a great deal to start a business and you don't need a great deal of wealth behind you and we'll deal deep dive down into that bit uh, further and that's and that's actually that flows on to position point six there that I've already uh, attended to and that's it it's never too late to start I've already told you the KFC story so we can just keep keep on going number seven I said what else can anybody else think of another reason I would like to share another reason they think it's a good idea to start a business yeah all I'd count that out of freedom but lifestyle and don't I have a lifestyle I've <laughs> You know, I've made some, some decisions over my life that um, maybe I've probably pushed the boundary a little bit too far with my finances, but I've been to 30-something countries. I've driven from Germany to Istanbul and all around for over a period of five months. So, and that was made possible because I got a digital business granted. But, yeah, the lifestyle elements of all that. I lived on a boat for 10 years. You know, a little story around that is that at one point, just when Telstra launched the NextG network, so they, they kicked off and they, um, you know, 3G was like, they, you know, Sol Toronto spent $2 billion on creating a high-speed, you know, phone network in Australia. It went rest the, where the rest of the world and the other telcos in Australia were just thinking about it. So all of a sudden we had this high-speed internet. It changed my life. And that was like 2006 or thereabouts. And subsequent to that, you know, a friend rang me and said, Oh, John, um, there's some high-speed telephone network now. It's like launching next week. I go, no, look, I've got all that stuff. It's rubbish. It doesn't work. The CDMA modems, you'd go a kilometre from the, the tower and they were rubbish. It didn't work. Whereas it was for real. And I bought the plug-in PC card for your computer and I bought the phone and instantly I went from being living on a boat constrained to coming back to the marina to do my work and having the freedom of the Whitsunday Islands. Now, I was stoked about that. But the kicker around that is that, as a subsequent to that, I actually um, started blogging around it and actually did data speed tests from all over the Whitsundays. I was like around Hamilton Island, at a station there. There's one down south, of Whit there's one around Early Beach, there's one at Shoot Harbour, so I was testing this performance of this and I was blogging about it. Anyway, the phone rang, didn't it, with someone from Telstra. And they rang and said, oh, hello, it's uh, Joanne from Telstra. I go, uh, I've paid my bill. I know, I know it's a bit late, but the money's coming, all right? They said, no, no, we're from marketing. You know, we'd like to send a film crew. How do you film, feel about that? I go, well, that sounds all right, doesn't it? So anyway, um, about two weeks later, they sent a film crew. And uh, it became part of a show reel that Sol Toronto used all over the world to promote his Next G network that he built with $2 billion of, of, of shareholder money. And he used that video. It was like, hi, I'm John Nail, and the ocean is my office. You know, and I was the tagline while they showed firefighters and remote education and newscasting and logistics. They had a, a little key change at the end, a little strum of the guitar, and it was, hello, you know, let my hair face go, and the hair was long, and I was perfect for the bit, I tell you. But subsequent to that, so the, the, t the real fun part about that is not only was my mum so proud because I was in all the newspapers and on YouTube and everything, but at some point, Telstra did, I took some needling, but they eventually gave me a $6,000 credit on my phone bill. 6000 That's pretty good, isn't it? So anyway, so you put yourself out there, you never know what you come to. Now, um, so lifestyle, yeah. Anything else? Feeling Anything? Achievement. Feeling achievement. Yes, Don, thank you very much. I'll need to update this slide, thank you. Mm. Now, you, f oh, you feel that, Don? I mean, you're helping others, is that so that gives you the altruistic outcomes? Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's something to flow on. I mean, the the benefactors of of uh, of my demise um, will probably be my employees, but that I get to feel very happy about as well. But that sense of achievement, certainly, yeah, yeah. Like I've looked at my pro projected income for this year, and I'm going, yeah, that's all right. It's not amazing. It's not Richard Bramson. There's no we need Don Kerr, I don't think. But it's pretty good 
it's pretty bloody good. And so there is that certainly that sense of achievement. They feel, and, and I've got to say, for me, it will. I, and it, I, I meet a lot of people who are stressed out due to money. Mm. It's part of the freedom. Yeah, actually, but, and uh, hands up who who here knows someone that's stressed out stressed out about money. You know, any anybody not putting their hands up? You know, I mean, everybody knows someone that's stressed about money. So to actually get that, so that's actually even a separate bullet point for it, isn't even isn't it? Let's write these down so I've got them for later. So achievement. I'm famous for not spelling right. Um, uh, no, it's a note for myself. Um, safe um, with uh, money. That's right. You're feeling confident. You're feeling confident. And what was the other one we said? So lifestyle was the other one. Yeah. Legacy. Legacy. Thank you, Don. So there we go. So there's some... Hmm? Or self. Yeah, or self. Yeah. So it's a thing. So all those sorts of things are in addition to those sorts of things the benefit of starting your own business. I mean, is that, is that not motivation enough? Have I not, you know, said enough things that make it really palatable compared to the safe world of PAYG? I don't know. I'll leave that up for you to decide. Anyway, let's move on. Ah, oh, now we get into some fun stuff. Uh, well, we've got whiteboard. Whiteboard, please. Uh, from, this, from the uh, studio audience, who's got some business ideas for me? Anyone? Anyone? I need some business ideas, otherwise this goes nowhere. A new product? A new product, a new product. A new product. okay. Make something up. Yeah. Give me a new product. Footwear? No, no, whatever. Okay. Product. Okay, and we'll say, as I said, uh, shoes. You've got, you've, you've cornered the market on the new, the new croc. <laughs> it's going to be the call to Susie. Um, anyway, so we had another idea. I think you mentioned before, it's cleaning service industries. Is it such a great demand? There is such a demand. Yeah, same for handyman. Yeah. I'm going to put in cleaning. I'm going to put in... I'm going to put in lawn mowing, but it, but that's consumables. So what what sort of hit me with the consumables? Like office consumables or meals, prepared meals, delivery. Yeah, meals. Well, that whole industry has been transformed by all these delivery type. I started baking this. See, in where I come from in the Philippines, we use vinegar as dipping sauce. It's like spring rolls and right. stuff. Yeah. Yes, they put chili in it. So I've started making this vinegar. Yeah. I put chili, ginger, turmeric, peppercorns, and it tastes really good. And I started selling them to friends. Yeah. And no, it's sort of, I know there's a lot of, um, you need to get a license and permit from the council. And I don't yeah. Know yeah. Sort of put it out there. So you're saying a food product? Yeah. Food product generically? Are we talking about, like uh, sort of thing. yeah, we're going to talk about a bottle product? Yeah. I say, so, um, so a sauce, yeah, I like that because, I mean, there's no end of new sauces hit the market and do quite well. Anyway, so... Yeah, so you could buy those things, but you make your own unique sort of recipe in that way. Of yeah. Well, yours is a little bit different. I mean, yeah, different that's right. Taste. Yeah, and there's, and there's all the marketing that goes with those sorts of things. But there's always opportunity in that. As there's always an opportunity in lawn mowing, cleaning, meals. All these things have opportunity, and they've been done before, but they're done again. Anybody else want some uh, other? Just think of influencer. Influencer. <laughs> In light of Facebook going down yesterday, that's put influencer. Flu Ensa. I'm going to definitely put that up there because there's a few people, even in the room, online, that know my feeling about social media. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Any others we want to put in there? Social events. Social event, event, oh, event management. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking if I've got enough there. Do, 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 do. I don't see, not Import. entirely. Uh, sorry? That's what I've had some people do, importing. Importing? And done well out of that. Let's put importing in there. Yeah, I've had some clients who have a side business importing. 
Well, I see. Can I, can I actually, let's go around this, and that sort of gets me where. Thanks, Don. I'll take a leap from there to, to one that I really want, and that's like something we all talk. We hear about drop shipping. Yeah, drop shipping is one of those things where people encourage. You know, there's a lot of online stuff being sold and peddled around um, uh, courses and how to like make a, a mozza on eBay selling or merchandising or trading in eBay. <coughs> <coughs> or for that matter, it's a drop shipping. So, is there any? Uh, there's actually there's some comments in there. I'll just hang on. I'll just jump in there and just see what's in there. Uh, for, finally, uh, oh, okay. Da -da 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 -da. Colonel, oh, okay, whatever. I don't see anything, any ideas in there. I I'll just. This will be other services, but mm -hmm. I think the big issue in our world is IT, lack like of IT support. Oh, like yeah. Just the Joe Blow, not too important. Yeah, yeah, let's put, let's put that in there, IT, because I can relate some. I can relate some very, some. Sorry, that is a good business idea. Yeah, well, I'll, I've got something very specific there to relate. And um, IT, um, uh, consumer services, you're saying? Well, just support. Consumer? Consumer. <laughs> and under here, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. And I have actually done repairs for the computers that have clearly been thrown out the window. <laughs> I know your friends. Um, <laughs> IT, I'm going to put it here, IT managed, uh, and I'm going to managed services. There's another one in there as well, because that's, um, those are two quite distinct ones. Now, this is where I get in, and is it that? Okay, that's actually, I've skipped forward in the ch chart here, but that's, while we've got this list here, let's play with it. No, 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 this, this, no, we'll, no, we'll better do this now. Pardon me, I'm, I'm back on it. Um, what's your opportunity to write a list? Now, was there actually an entrepreneur in there? You know there's the guy that, um, or the business around, it's called Mini Movers. Has everybody seen Mini Movers trucks? So I got to actually interview that guy on the Central Business Show a couple of years ago, and he now lives in the Philippines, and he's got four or five different businesses, he says. But one thing he says is like, if you're gonna, he actually used to have a, um, a porn broker store at Stone's Corner years ago, and he said, and he says, one day I watched one of these lifestyles of the rich and famous shows on, on television on a Sunday afternoon, as was the thing back in the day. Um, and he says, oh, how do I get a lifestyle like this? I'm not going to get this as a pawnbroker, you know, trading in stolen goods. No, not stolen goods. <laughs> things that are <laughs> the <laughs> corner, <laughs> famous for it. But, um, so, but he, he, said, and he said this, and that's what we've just done, is you look for opportunities and you write a list. And he says, you, you just in your everyday life, you just go around and just look out for things you see as opportunities. And you write them down. And then what you then do is then judge them very harshly. So you look at the, the, the so judge it harshly on the nature of the target market. So let's do something with this, okay? So target market, and everybody knows what I mean when I say that, yeah? Target market. So IT consumer stuff, Suzanne, is anybody who's frustrated with their computer, I'm just going to say um, um, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd be generational though, wouldn't it? Yeah. I know my two yeah. brain sons think they know everything, but they just go and buy something new or something. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. And, I will, and I'll drill down on that, because that's it. That'd be our age group. Mm. Yeah, I'll no. to keep going. yeah, and I'll, we'll get to a punchline around these, so we'll, we'll judge all these quickly on these, on these tangents, yeah? So market size. IT managed services is for business, yeah? Let's talk about um, a product for shoes. So um, everyone, everyone needs shoes. They want that new croc. They want their, their pair of Susies. Um, cleaning um, is obviously that's residential, um, but we're going to uh, we're going to agree that that's people above a certain above um, a dollar threshold. Yeah, you've got to be able to afford cleaning. Yeah, um, something about lawn mowing here, residential. They're going to be a homeowner, or they're going to live in a house. And once again, above dollars. Meals. Well, hasn't that become popular? Whether it's menu log or Uber Eats or whatever, but this has transformed the world, particularly during COVID times, hasn't it? Now, I don't necessarily think it's even in a positive way, but 
there's dirt certainly and you hear about these things there's what do they call a ghost kitchen or something it's not a ghost kitchen it's something similar to that where people are setting up commercial kitchens in in small commercial blocks and then just punching out meals and they'll punch out a whole range of different meals yeah, and apartments are being sold with their full kitchens yeah. people are wanting to cook. exactly so it's changing the way we live and, and we're only in the we're only in the minority in terms of the way that it is you watch those documentaries about how that happens in China and other places in the world where so much, such a high percentage of food is delivered. Meals are all delivered. Terrible thing is in terms of the takeaway containers in my world, as a guy's you know, fighting a war on plastics quietly, is a nutritional element. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. But anyway, look, anyway, everyone is a candidate for this, and that's why we see, see the explosion here. And I need a little separator here for this. Uh, the source thing, uh, yeah, look, uh, the source, they're going to be um, uh, p ev uh, people. Yeah, looking for new flavours. New flavours. Yeah, yeah. I know, and that's right. Now, how many products are there in Kombucha now? There's a couple of big players, and I take it that is, is Pepsi in the game yet? Is Coca Cola in the game? Is one of the big beverage producers in the kombucha game and just going to wipe them all out because they've got the control of the shelf. The fridges, you know, the fridges are Coca-Cola fridges, aren't they? Um, influencer. <laughs> Who's their target market? I'm still trying to work that one out. Anyone who want to help me? Um, Insta <laughs> yeah, so, social media uh, users. Yeah. Oh, well, it's arguably, I mean, this is live on YouTube, arguably, I'm in the influencing game right now. To a really small audience, but, you know, I've, I'm trying to get people to come over to my way of thinking on something, yeah? So, influencer. Uh, event management. So, that's going to be for, uh, are we doing more weddings or are we doing more corporate functions? I know a bit about this industry, corp functions. Well, apparently, if you use a wedding plan, you can have more people at your wedding during so, you know, the ins and outs of the COVID restrictions. Okay. Well, the, I've known a few friends whose kids have got married. Because they've got a COVID plan or something. Yeah, that they're, they're oh. trusted to do, so they came twice, twice as many people, I think, at the event. Oh. So, big, big yeah, boost so, for them. But uh, 12 months ago, what sort of, what sort of position yeah. were they in? <laughs> they wiped out. Now, I've actually um, quite well acquainted with um, a successful event management person, a um, friend from Sydney, and uh, she at one point had Nikon, Apple, uh, she was doing things at the Opera House, you know, and that's, it's a pretty fickle sort of industry. And it's, it's successful if you put the energy in, and she certainly worked overtime on that one, so well done to her. Um, importing drop shipping. Look, pick a product once again. Well, let's bring in, what's the latest thing for kids now? There's some, isn't there some little finger skateboard or something like that? You know, isn't it? Can be, there's no idea. <laughs> well, it was. There's, there's a little finger skateboard and they're doing tricks. Who was telling me about that? I don't know. And the, the other years, there's a couple of fidget spinners, you know. Oh, just, yeah, spinners, you yeah. know, just that's it. So that's it. Next cool thing for kids. And for kids. Um, so they're your target market, trying to peddle the kids. Du, 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 du. Okay, market size. Let's do that quickly. Market size. Okay, I consumer. Look, that's pretty big, but we are going to constrain it because you ha we're onto something there, Brian. Is that, and I can tell you this, is I had a computer repair business up until about three years ago, and I've still got the SIM card, and I give, I've now given it to a couple of different people, and they just answer the calls, and they're, they're trusted guys and do a great job. Now that used to be IT can random consumer stuff was a successful thing to do. Um, up until, yeah, but now we've got this ubiquity of telephones, the smartphones, we don't actually sit down. And it, actually that's another thing we see in uh, our internet usage statistics uh, with my business, uh, looking at website usage. Like it's just gone 20% mobile, 30% mobile, 40% mobile, and now it's over 50%, 60% mobile on websites. Never mind social media, you know, your WhatsApp, your bloody, um, all those other things you're doing, and then apps, you're consuming a whole bunch of things just purely in apps. So the world is transitioning away from computers. So if you want to throw that computer, the computer out the window, Susan, do it. And make it a good one, you know. And then commit yourself to never use a computer again, because that's kind of the way it's going. 
And then on the flip side is, like Brian said, is that people are just, you know, will go out and just buy a new one. Yeah, yeah, and that's and I've, so often I've come across a circumstance where um, you know, uh, friends, relatives of mine, they said, "Oh, the computer's playing up, and it's got some, it's been hacked." So I've just bought a new one. I go, "No, I'm an IT guy. We can get that stuff off that computer. We can repair that cracked screen or the the hinge." You know, my favourite one was fixing the hinges. Oh, yeah. I used to do that all the time. You get in there with a little. No, never mind. Anyway, so um, I'm going to say in this one it's shrinking. Is, is everybody okay if I write shrinking in here? IT managed services for business. Oh my God. And that's where I say to my friend who is doing the computer repairs business at the moment, so why aren't you doing managed services? Everybody know what that is? Managed services? You know, the you, you, you pay a fixed amount of money to an IT services firm oh. as a business and they promise you peace of mind no matter what happens. Yeah, and if they're doing it properly, you should never get a virus, you should never get a hack, your email should always work. Yeah, okay, manage services. So manage services, so this is a business. This is actually an opportunity and the businesses gradually are getting more and more it says it should just pay for that peace of mind. And is it technical? Oh my God, it's technical. Because they'll ring you up with stuff. Oh, I've heard about this cloud storage and we've got this happening and now we've got to, imagine these managed services guys last year when COVID started. They've, all, they've gone from, oh, this is all cool. We've got this office full of computers. We can remotely manage them and keep everybody connected. And we've got this lovely ethernet, all this blue cable going around the place. And then all of a sudden COVID hits and it's like, all this stuff want to work from home. The managed services guys go, oh, okay, work to do. Put down the smoothies. <laughs> no sushi for lunch today. We've got to stay here and actually do something. But I assure you that a, a good IT managed services business is making really good moolah. Shoes, okay. Market size, everybody needs shoes. So we, we said, so we, there's plenty of opportunity in the shoes. Obviously it's gotta be something that's popular, but um, yeah, there's lots, lots of opportunity in there. Cleaning, uh, market size, yeah, that's pretty big. Lots, I'm gonna say as a generic term, lots of opportunity in this one. Meals, lots of opportunity in this one. Source. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, and um, thank you. I, I wanted you to say it to, to for yourself, minimal. <laughs> no, that's all right. No, it's all good. No, last I had the guy here was like to grow um, bean sprouts or something was in the last seminar. So, and we talked long, long and hard about that. <laughs> Influencer, um, market size. I still encourage him to go away and get involved in bean sprout growing. I gave him a formula for doing it. Um, business wise, influencer. Um, do, 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 marks. Thank you. Large but competitive. But competitive. Sorry, studio uh, online audience. You obviously can't see this close up, but you sort of you can hear me talking, I guess. Um, event management. Um, small and competitive. Yeah. Does anybody want to fight me on that one? Small and competitive. So, I mean, who even uh, has been down to one of these parks around the Kangaroo Point or New Farm of an evening and they get their little, there's no one sitting here, they just set them up. Oh, look, I've got this business where like a little love couples can just come and hang out. I always assume they've been pre booked and people haven't turned up when you see them all set up. I know. Down at Burley and they did that, don't you? They've got these lovely yeah. little settings and. Someone must be able to use it, surely. Oh, yeah, and that's like, fancy, you know, having to be accountable to a beach wedding. I mean, just so many variables in there. Just it's like, stop the wind. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's like, oh, my God, we didn't know it was a dog beach, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's launching a tennis ball through the, through the ceremony, you know, because they've got a right to. Um, importing, drop shipping. Large, but what's the obvious problem here? Competition. Nice. Competition, yep and fads because and this is where it really gets down to brass tacks and really good businesses and this is where it really gets important is when we talk about returning customers like I see so many businesses come to me and I've been involved in a number of business networks where every week they've got to find a new customer now 
I, I was with a real estate agent recently who orchestrated the sale of a friend's property. And he's like, oh, John, it's great to have a beer with you. Have you got any advice about, you know, how to help me increase my, my coverage, my search engine, my website, my influence, my videos or whatever for real estate agents? I said, you've just told me you've got a Bachelor of, of Chemical Engineering. Why on earth are you a real estate agent? Because every day you've got to be a, a part of that old real estate industry which comes with all the prima donnas and all the attitude. And every day, and he told me about the first 18 months of his career where he just spent the entire time calling a database that was given to him, getting rejection after rejection, to finally after 18 months getting someone listed a really awful apartment with him. Now, sure, he ended up selling that apartment and he had his first win and that's, you know, started him off on a, a full career in real estate. But the mission in, in real estate is a tough one because you are always fighting out for competition and always looking for the next listing. Because without a listing, you've got nothing. You haven't got a product. So, um, IT consumers. I've had an IT repair business and I did have returning customers, but it was annual at best and it was 10% of them. So I'm going to say sorry, no, to this one in terms of returning customers. IT management services, you're charging those customers every month. Sticky. It's sticky, thank you. Yes, a big yes. Selling shoes, once you've sold, you sell someone a pair of Susie's, are they going to come back for a second pair? You got next year's range? No, not sure. It's a bit... Mm, so, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe you can you can have a you know you can get a durable brand, but unless you can, yeah, do it year in year out and come up with new products that people love and want, you're struggling. Yeah, cleaning, yes, yes. particularly if you do a great job. Lawn mowing, yes. I mean, this comes with one caveat. What's the obvious difference between cleaning and lawn mows? Yeah, what's the difference in the two products though? Seasonal. Seasonal, thank you very much. So, um, so winter, like I've got a lawn mowing bloke for my investment properties in Early Beach. So is he mowing much over, over the past three months? No, but in Early Beach, it's about to start raining and it's gonna rain hard. It's gonna be like, <laughs> it's gonna be like um, some sort of torrential thing up there this summer, I'm sure, and it's gonna cost me a mozzarella mowing, but it's seasonal. So that's all right if you like going away in, in winter time from Early Beach, I guess, but otherwise, it has got a seasonal element. Lord mommy. Seasonal. Meals. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, people might come back for your meal. I've certainly I'd still I've been faithfully going to the one um, Indian place for now twenty something years. Actually it's more like thirty, I'm sure. It's at Milton, it's called Sultan's Kitchen. I love their chicken tikka masala. I love their nana minis, their spinach naans. Unique, beautiful, tasty, does nothing good for my cholesterol but I still keep going back. So um, there is that sticky thing that happens around restauranting, but it's, it's, it's a bit fickle though, isn't it, at the same time, isn't it? People can so easily move away and they, you know, it's so hard. So long time between chicken and chicken masala is when you've spent 10 years living on a boat in the wood Sundays. I didn't get to Milton that much. Sauces, are they gonna come back for your sauces? <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing, you know, it's orgasm in every bottle. Um, yeah, um, sometimes, it's not, you know, compared to, I'm well, sorry. Tell me about this one in hands where the consumer is, but this one is like, it, it runs out really quickly and people do use it for grading meals. Mm. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's right. So it's get, they're going to be on so it for a while. Not specifically in that, in that specific product in itself, mm. but the idea of grading something. Mm. You know, mm. Oh look, there's, um, I've come across a, a number of people, there's a, a Turkish friend of mine, he, he makes amazing Turkish food and I've encouraged him to find, you know, the obvious one and I've seen this done really well, particularly with the, the Gozlemes, you know, I met a guy once and he'd make four grand in a weekend making Gozlemes at, at markets. So two days work, 1400, bit of cash back in the day, not so much anymore, but um, yeah, doing market stalls. If you want to work a couple of days a week, yeah. no, not for you. <laughs> so anyway, Mark, look, even you know, I've thought about. I love market stalls. I've got in my sprinter. I've got a you know a trestle table and a three by three marquee. I'm ready for a market. You know, and I'd go and sell my marketing. I'd go there, sit there in a chair, 
And people come past and go like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I've got a marketing business. It's like, well, you want a sample? What do you want a sample, a taster? I'll have a bit of sausage or a, or a toothpick or something for me to try. That's about the extent of it. Just as a little, oh, are you selling these sausages? No, I've got a marketing business, but I got you to stop and talk to me, didn't I? Yeah. So <laughs> you never know what you're going to turn up. Oh, look, they're actually going back years, and an, he's, ailing, he's an ailing friend these days. He's got some health issues, but we used to go to the Chandler markets, and he'd have, he'd go out there, he'd go and buy, you know, the carpet samples. It's as simple as this. He'd make a monster out of this. He'd go and buy the carpet sample things from the auctions. These things are worthless, you know, from the liquidation auctions. He'd pull the screws out of it and he'd go out and, because they've already got the, what's, what do you call it, the, the embroidering around the edge. He'd, he'd take them and sell them as doormats, even though they've got holes in them, you know. It's like people that come in and they're like, and they go through looking for the perfect doormat, you know, and some of them be stupid enough to you know, like, and so, why have they got a hole? You know, because you know, it's a market stall. People are asking stupid questions like, why has it got holes in it? Why has it got and, and he'd say, that's so you can see what's on the other side. <laughs> and he'd have two tied, two tied together and wear them like an A frame over his things, you know. Oh, I'm the mat man, you know. And he would make a killing just because he was a fool, you know. And he put on a great sideshow. And people, you know, pay five, ten dollars for these mats, even though they cost him cents on the dollar. So th never underestimate the money that people make in markets. And that was all cashola back in the day too. Um, where are we up to? So source. Source? Yeah, certainly. Y y you know, I've seen people you make it. Put it through the supermarkets, but yeah. Mouse, yeah, so well, then you get into the field of fast moving consumer goods, FMCG. Yeah. I, I know a guy that succeeded in that. In fact, um, it's the orange power that's in the loo. He's been pushing that stuff through coals and it's always a battle of inches in the coals. It's, it's a mission. It's a big mission and, um, to get yourself. And then you've got to answer to volume commitments as well. Yeah. You're going to make sauce like you've never made sauce before. So um, have that in mind. Influencer, returning customers. If you've got someone to buy something off your influence, can, are they going to buy something else? Are they going to come back and buy everything that you tell them to buy? The next big makeup product, the next, I don't know, surfboard. It's pretty tenuous. I'm not sure. I'm going to say not sure. And let's face it, those guys are making, and there's actually a bit of accountability coming out. There's now actually, uh, the UK have come up with a, I do know a bit about the field obviously, but the UK have come up with some authority that's now checking the bona fides of the influencers and who's paying them. And so if they put something on their Instagram that's a paid placement and they don't write it up as that, in the UK that can get them in a lot of trouble because they're not being transparent in their marketing or they're, they're influencing. Um, and that's, and obviously, and never mind the outage we had on Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp the other day, never mind that the, um, you know, the currently the governments of the, of the Western world are certainly questioning the, um, uh, the, 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 the way in which these social media platforms behave, particularly focused on Facebook and the, and the, you know, even this paper, then this whistleblower just now just said, look, Facebook's doing things to young minds, even the, in full knowledge that they are. So, so this whole influence thing, I've seen some, look, it's, it's like in my world, it's like being a top tennis player. You know, the guys, the top 10 tennis players in the world, they're making a killing, yeah? They're getting paid millions, they're winning millions to be a top tennis player. They've got the sponsorships and all the rest of that. You go there and then the top 100, they're kind of doing okay, yeah? And then below that, they're sleeping in their cars. And they're going to events in the hope that they're gonna actually get a start. There'll be a wild card entry because they happen to be sleeping in the car park and they get a go, get a go at that tennis event. So that's how wild cards work. So, there's, so influencers and that sort of business Movie stars, sports stars, and that sort of thing. It's the people at the top of the game make all the money. And there are. There's people who make some crazy money in influence. But it's a hard gig, I tell you. <laughs> um, event management, uh, returning customers. Yes, I'm going to say that one's not too bad, depending on whether you go in the wedding market. Obviously, if someone uses you for a wedding, are they going to come back? <laughs> no. In theory. No, but that, that I'm genuinely saying returning customers. Sure, they, can, they might recommend you for someone else's event or for someone else they know is getting married and want to use you as well, but they, in theory, should never come back for another go. Unless maybe they come back for their 10 year anniversary. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? But it's a long bow, so I'm saying not really. 
That being said, as I said, I've got, I know some event management businesses that have done very well out of account management of major corporate businesses that do regularly hold events. And, uh, and if you do that well, you can make a lot of money, a lot of money. Um, importing drop shipping. Um, I really don't like this one. As I said, there's people out there selling courses on drop shipping and how to be effective in this market. But it's, it's a long bow, isn't it? Not really. Oh, this is the part where I run out of whiteboard space. I remember this in previous, uh, doing this talk. Easily done by others. In market, it's called imperfectly reproducible. You know, is, is, the, is the art of coming up with something that people can't reproduce simply. Um, so, uh, uh, what the replaceable, I'm just going to say, yeah? And it's really <laughs> scribbled in there. Um, can someone else do this? Yes. Can someone else do this? Yes. Uh, shoe products? Uh, it's a, if it's an amazing shoe, yes, but there are other shoes, yes? Cleaning? Yes. Lawn mowing? Other people, plenty of people want to mow your lawn. Meals? Yes, unless you've got something amazing. Sauce. I'm going to give you sauce. It's, you're saying me this sauce is pretty special. So I'm going to say... Yeah, that's right. We, we all want to try this sauce now, you know. <laughs> Everybody who's watching online, send in your email address or your address. We're going to get you some sample sauces. Uh, Laurel Lee's going to make up plenty for everyone, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, her phone number is, no, um, no, no, influencer, influencer. Um, yes, plenty of influencers are out there, want to be superstars. Event management, sorry. Import distribution of fidget spinners. You know, as soon as someone's bringing, you know, there's just going to be another person selling it a little bit cheaper on eBay. Sorry. Well, the source is the only winner there. <laughs> <laughs> On that tangent. I actually have a lot that I made just the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it in the car? No, I'm only kidding. Now, anyway, so th have we got any here that we want to add now? Now we've looked at this matrix of models here, yeah? The matrix of models. Uh, another business, you mean? Mm, another business. Anyone that want to put in there? Uh, a lot of people want to be graphic designers, and unless you've got some sort of amazing you know, thing that you're going to do. I'm actually, look, for fun, I'm going to put, like, this thing, account for a lot of these. If you do a really good job on these things, this is not such a much a big, a big deal. If you're doing an amazing job for your clients, whether you're a marketing guy, an accountant, a mortgage broker, if you're doing an amazing job, you'll get clients sticking to you. And I'll come back month in, month out, year in, year out, next time they do a loan. Um, or you know, just keep you on their books and pay you monthly like I enjoy with my client, with my business. But that's the thing. So a lot of these things you can wipe out. A lot of these ones you can, you know, can take this element out to a certain extent. Also goes for this one as well and this one here. If it really is an amazing shoe, people come back looking for more shoes, won't they? Um, saying what have we got in this year's range? But um, there's... Um, do, 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 do. Let's put in here, I'm going to put in here... Um, and it's a bit of a wild card, R&D company. I've got a friend, and I don't know who I'm talking about. He's got an R&D business, he does electronics. Now he's got accounts, he's, he's doing stuff for major retail. He's doing stuff for Outback Electronics, so um, four-wheel drives type stuff, and um, stuff you take camping with you. And he, for the most part, do, 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 kills this one and he's built up accounts where he's got these major businesses um, buying volume stuff off him because he's got the electronic designs he's got the IP and he's actually gone to the next level where he's actually patented this stuff he's come up with some really unique designs and really unique technology and he's dedicated his life to it he really is passionate about it you don't get him started on it he just never shuts up <laughs> but, but he, by doing patents, for the most part, they're not going to protect you everywhere in the world and people will sometimes just come and copy your stuff anyway. 
but for the most part patents are a really great way to <coughs> kill this one. So even if we look at R&D, uh, so this four wheel drive market, uh, the market size, well four wheel drive market in Australia is huge. Uh, returning customers, well he's actually, he's, um, he's a manufacturer, yeah? So his clients are actually retailers. So he's got a really good opportunity down here. You know, and in one way, I'm going to go in and under here and say, IT managed services and marketing services. And I'm going to... Hmm? You're basically saying you've got a skill you can sell. A skill or something unique. Something that you're good at. Mm. Mm. It's like my other business doing workshops for teachers. Yeah, that's right. So you've got a unique sort of bend on things as a set of personal things. And I was saying to someone earlier this week, is like we've all got something in our head. You know, and we're, we're you know, none of us in this room are fresh off, <laughs> fresh out of diapers. We've all got a level of knowledge in something that is valuable to something. And maybe what I'll do is I'll kick on to the next slide because that will actually help uh, draw up how you can actually turn something rather mundane into something worthwhile and profitable. And maybe that even relates in terms of my own story. Um, but I will actually, I will drill down on it. So target market, business, and I'll extrapolate on that a bit more around my own thing. Uh, the market size is limited. Share that uh, my customers return. Um, and is it re reproducible? Not really. Um, everybody that's ever built a website or, or looked into it has probably heard of WordPress. Okay? WordPress is used by 90 plus percent of the world's websites. We build websites, we do not use WordPress. We do it in our own special way and we own the IP. And when someone leaves us, they don't get to take that IP with us. So just like my friend Alan, it's not easy to reproduce what we do. We're very effective at what we do and we don't use the regular tools. We don't use MailChimp is another favourite. We've got our own software for doing that. So by doing that, I've actually been able to manifest quite an effective business. And that's, as I said, quite a distinct difference from just five years ago when I returned from Early Beats going, oh, you can get a website for 600 bucks out of India or from offshore. How am I going to compete with that? I'm not going to get the five, ten thousand dollars for a website I did when I left. <laughs> And uh, so it was like, okay, I need to be smarter about how the way I do this. And that certainly manifests. Anyway, um, well, we've done that one. Kind of out order. Yes? Do you mind me just asking, how many companies do you think create programs for web design? Um, Probably less than that. How many, any for, oh, for web design? Yeah. Um, well, um, uh, well, I've mentioned WordPress, yeah. Yeah, so you're talking about create software yeah, for software for doing it. Does anybody else want to name some others? Other platforms for building websites? I'm just paying $30 a month to have a two-page website <coughs> like my original. Mm. Um, it's just having the same stuff. If any group can do it, could do it, I just had nothing to add, so I've got to be out and squeeze the Yeah, that's right. There was actually a print media business in Brisbane. I'm trying to think of the name. I think it was what, it might have been Snap even or something like that. And they had something like that where as part of your print portfolio, you could just have them create a really basic website for you. Is and they charge you. Booking your um, internet address for yourself. So if you want to call mm. yourself something, tied it up, mm. your website name. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to answer your question, like there's Wix. Is another one? Heard, anybody else heard of Wix? Wix is really popular because uh, as opposed to WordPress, it's actually easy to use. If anybody's ever had a look at WordPress, including myself, when I came back to the industry, I looked at WordPress, I lifted the bonnet going, oh, this is awful. Well, there's all these plugins and there's all these complaints about them um, colliding with each other and then you have to upgrade them endlessly, etc., etc. So. What's the one they use in high schools? Because I know my boys at their high school year 11, <coughs> they had to design a website for a business. Oh, they probably used the Microsoft front page product back in the day. What age are they now? Uh, 23, 24. Okay, yeah, back in the day, um, Microsoft had stitched up with a product called front page, which was like a a thing and you designed it and then spat out pages. 
but long gone are those days, as I said, well, WordPress oh, is... Was online, <coughs> it wasn't anything on print. Oh, oh look, it could have been something like a Wix yeah. or something like that. Yeah, so, um, so that's the thing, like, as I said, I had to go from being a web designer using the tools that everybody used, but I reprogrammed it and came up, and a little bit more of about that story, how that happened for me, so as I said, I came back to Brisbane, I'd had this great life, income was looking pretty shabby. <laughs> um, I joined a business network and went along as, and just went back to my origins. I'm an IT graduate, so I went back to, and I've done a lot of computer support in my days. And like you say, a lot of people want to throw computers out the window frequently, and they do. Well, they sit on them, goodness knows, hacking, whatever. So, um, so I went into just com doing computer support, and that was all right. And then within this business group, I said identifiers like, well, hey, you know, started hanging around with these guys, and they're all sort of asking questions about web design and marketing and stuff like that. And I go, and actually, I discovered, much to my, well, mirth and satisfaction, I guess, is that, you know, all the skills that I'd done and the work I'd done on the Whit Sundays, working for a, a number of businesses up there, I, I didn't know it, but actually now had a term it was called digital marketing, and that was the thing. So when I came to appreciate that all those things I've done in terms of writing software, websites. Um, putting things on Google, managing ads, managing social media, doing newsletters and sending them, creating videos, all photography, all those things, all were bracketed under the thing now labelled digital marketing. I go, oh shit, I'm a digital marketer, aren't I? Oh, isn't that good news? I've actually got a title at last, you know? And so from that, I then transitioned through doing marketing, um, appraisals for people, doing reports, and I came up with a product. So get this, so I did a product and I went to this business group and said, from today, forget that other computer stuff, I'll still do that for you. But what I want to talk to you about is being, is doing a marketing plan for you. Like I hear a lot of people asking me questions, I see a lot of people make mistakes. For $5.95, I'll do your marketing report and I'll give you a money back guarantee. Like I do, it for, I do the interview, I'll go away and think about it, write your report, present it to you. If you don't like the printed, article and the presentation, I'll give you your money back. And so I sold a half dozen at $5.95. No one ever wanted their money back. They were all deeply appreciative. One of those clients said, oh, that's great. Now, how do I get this done? I go, oh, shit. Now I've got something. Well, uh, let's say two grand a month. He's gone, all right, let's get started. I go, oh, shit. I've just got a recurring income, haven't I? I'm back in business. And then from there, um, I just went and then what I found is actually there were some really common threads in the marketing program. And I was able to then uh, take that product to other people and say, look what I've done for him as a tradie business. We can do those same things for you and you'll get a result, I promise you. I'm not going to give you a money back guarantee, but I promise you we'll get your result. And meanwhile, the 595 plans went to 895, went to 995, went to 1500 went to two grand. I think the, the, the most recent one we sold, we don't really bother doing them anymore, the most recent version of just that marketing plan, I was sitting down with someone having a constructive conversation about where they are in their business and how they go forward from here with their marketing, the most recent one I sold for twenty three fifty, And I promise you it was effortless. And the client was deeply appreciative for it because he got three professionals myself and a, a younger guy from a technical point of view and a social point of view and an older um, mindset type person came in as well and, and played a part in that, paid them handsomely for their role in that, but still did quite well for myself, yeah. Um, sorry, I've gone off on a tangent there. But anyway, that's a, a part of my story which I'm quite happy to share. So as I said, coming back to it, if you've got some knowledge that you can re repackage in a certain way, then it becomes incredibly valuable. You know, I know a couple of people in this room, I know that, actually I'm sure everybody in this room has got some knowledge that's valuable in some dollar amount to someone. I'm sure of it. We've got to probably spend a bit of time finding it, but I'm sure you've got it. You know, regardless of whether you've worked in a call centre, you do a call centre training, you know, it's maybe something. You know, um, you know, mortgage broking is something traditionally you wouldn't pay people to do your mortgage broking, but if your knowledge is so good at mortgage broking, why wouldn't you pay that mortgage broker to sort your shit out? Anyway, um, what size business do you want? Let's get on with it. Um, Gerber, it's on the thing here, the E-Myth recommended reading, E-Myth, e E-Myth Revisited, the, the updated edition, so from Gerber. And early on in this, and around about the first chapter, he says something really important. He says, if you start a small business, what are you going to get? 
small business. Who wants to start a small business? <laughs> Let's pretend we're going to start a small business, yeah? So um, now we're in a small business. And what I'm going to do, and this is, one of my, this is where really the rubber hit the road. This is something I did one Sunday morning. I got some coaching. I'd done a bunch of reading. And I sat down and I thought, and this is a real takeaway. I love doing this for anyone randomly in the street, uh, down at a surf break, whatever it takes. I love sharing this piece of knowledge. But let's pretend that you do a small business and we'll pick one out of our list from before. Let's do sources, yeah? S source business. <laughs> There's always one in the crowd that's got something unique. But anyway, no, look, this is fun because you'll see something really important here. I think this pen's failing and we'll go to another one. Now, um, now, um, now let's do an organisational chart for a, small business, for a small business that's in the business of making sources, yeah? Okay. So you've started that business, you're the CEO of that business, yeah? <laughs> now, under the CEO, in, in any well-organised business, as a general manager, is there not? We will have, of course. <laughs> now, from there, now in any organisational chart, let's pretend the business actually got quite big. What departments have you got in most businesses then? Production. Production. I'm going to put production over here. Yeah, so accounts, I'm going to put finance all under accounts, yeah? HR. I've heard some other ones, HR. What else have we got? We've got marketing. Technical. we got, uh, IT. yeah, IT. Operations. Um, uh, sales. Now, we're not going to really extrapolate. Obviously, we're, getting, we're in the source business. We need R&D. We need to come up with new sources, yeah? <laughs> so let's put in R&D in there as well. The next big source coming your way this summer. Um, so this is anyway. So let's have some fun with this now. Um, now marketing. What are some of the marketing functions? Are ubiquitous? Hit me with them. Website. Website. Social. Media. Social. What now? If anybody's actually done a course, a proper course on marketing at UniSafe, where does marketing actually start? Where does marketing start? How about market research? Market research. We've got this sauce, but it's going to burn your mouth, yeah? It's chilly. Too much chilli in the, in the sauce, it's going to kill you. So market research is an important part of marketing. But anyway, for efficiency of time, because what time are we up to? We're cracking on with it. So let's do some uh, IT departments. So we've got um, uh, support. Procurement, procure, procure, um, sales, what's some sales functions? Anyone? Sales, prospecting, demos, demos. yeah, um, so demo tasting, um, databasing, closing. Got to close this. Oh, no, actually, what, what comes before closing this up? First, you've got to quote. Hello, Mr. Customer. I want to sell you three boxes of sauce. It's going to be a special rate for you today. Today only, 45 bucks a case. All right. You'll need logistics and distribution. Yeah, that's right. So, we, we get, so we've got logistics, logs, HR, payroll. Recruitment. Even if you're your own business, you're still going to have a harsh word with yourself when you do something wrong, yeah? <laughs> Recruitment. Hopefully you don't have to give yourself a show cause or sack yourself, you know? That'd be terrible. R&D. Development. Um, yeah, uh, once again. Uh, what are we in production? Oh, how, actually, we're getting around actually making some sauces. My God. Um, ingredients. Well, that's in HR. We've got the HR over here. So we're getting ingredients together. Um, we, we've got a, uh, we're looking after the kitchen. Um, brewing or have whatever you do to make a sauce, I don't know. Bottling. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and that's all right, so cleaning. 
cleaning. Da, da, da. What's this one again? Oh, this is logistics. logistics. Oh, deliveries. Look, we could just strap that on there, but deliveries, uh, vehicles, accounts, uh, bills, uh, invoices, debt collection, debts. Oh, for the efficiency of time, let's get cut to the chase. Does anybody see the obvious problem here? <laughs> yep. This is one Sunday morning for me, I assure you. The one Sunday morning as a small business guy doing websites and the odd computer repair, fresh off the boat. Yeah. How do you feel about that? You know, I sat back and looked. There was a piece of A4. I don't know whether I saved it, but I hope I did. I wish I did. I could go through my, all my notes and hopefully it's there somewhere. But I stood back and looked at that and gone. Holy fuck. No wonder my head's a mess. I, for 17 years of running a business, I've been doing all those things. All of those things. And you're not the best person to do those things. By no means are you the best person to do all those things. You might think a lot of yourself, I certainly do think that I'm quite capable, but you're not the best person for those roles. Um, and there's, and there's in terms of the things I think back over the 15 years, the stuff I did, and some of the mistakes I've made, um, some of the quality control issues that pervaded in my work, I was a really average web designer, to be quite honest. I didn't really follow up and do everything I need to do. Now I've got some great people on staff that do a fantastic job on writing content and do a fantastic, meticulous job on creating websites. While I'm spending a bit of time surfing. I've got multiple people in this room who can vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so do you get some takeaways from that? Does this slap you, smack you in the face at all? Because this is the big one for me. So you're not the best person. So straight away I say, what's the one thing on there that you're really hopeless at? What's, the, what's actually no better than that? What's the thing on there that you would hate to have to do? The production. Oh, you don't actually want to make it. <laughs> You happy to make it? It's that way, of course you have to. Do you want to do the? Do you want to do the marketing, the socials? Uh, yes. You do. Do you want to do the sales? You want to get on the phone and get, convince people to buy your product? Uh, I don't mind that. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about uh, doing the recruitment, hiring and firing? Yeah. You're okay with that? Yes. All right. We're still looking. How about the driving around, delivering stuff? No. <laughs> All right. We've we have a winner. So in here, delivery. So that's the first thing. Now I, I did that with a new client of mine recently. And I, I did this process with him. He says, oh, how about the coaching element? I go, no, we can start that now if you want. What's the one thing, I did this process with him. I said, what's the one thing you hate doing here? He says, I hate writing blogs. I hate writing blogs. I said, well, you've just signed us on. That's our job. You know, congratulations. You've just lifted that weight off your shoulders because you no longer have to write blogs. And so the first thing that you would do in this business by the sound of it, outside of what have we got? Accounts, how do you go with the accounts? You like chasing people for bills? Making people pay? Like doing your baz? <laughs> okay, that's good. But there are bookkeepers around that will do that stuff cheaply. Or better still get use an accountant. They'll do a fantastic job every time. And there are, so as I said, and what you're doing, and it's really simple now, how many different ways can you get someone to deliver some source to someone cheaply? You know, you can say... Well, well you, you've got to find so many people. If it's a domestic or, sorry, a Brisbane, you know, South East Queensland delivery or Brisbane delivery, you can you put in an Uber and then you're going to find a favourite Uber driver. And then he's already got an ABN He's already making an income as an independent contractor, so you're going to say, you're going to come to an arrangement with Mr. Uber Driver, say, hey, can you be here thing tomorrow, WhatsApp message, reliable, can you be nice to my customers? How do you feel about wearing a shirt that's got my logo on it when you deliver it? All of a sudden your Uber's become your personalised prestige, five star delivery specialist who delivers with a smile. Job done. Job done. So. And that's kind of where, the, where we cut to the chase is around this, 
is another takeaway from that is ultimately I firstly believe, and I'm trying, and certainly certain people have done it, I mean, go back to our first pitcher, Bramson. Is he flying planes? Is he building spaceships himself? You know, no he's not. He's hanging around at events, he's sticking his head out the window of aeroplanes with a spacecraft in his hand, you know, a toy one in his hand saying, look what I've done. He hasn't done any of that, he's just counted the money and got other people to do the work. So ultimately, your job across a business, in my opinion, and you've done this process for yourself and you've come to realise that your business has got this, every business has this shape, yeah? So your job to do is then get out of every single one of these. And then you can spend more time on the lifestyle element because, and you've found trusted people and you've, you've um, and, uh, trained people and contracted people and employed people to do an amazing job for you. And going back to the, that one of those early slides about the sorts of things, got great staff, got great clients, the way you go. And in the end, you just sit atop the pile. You might, con I still control my bank account. People are a big fan of that. Make sure that you're doing the account so you, you know you know that no one's pinching your money. So many bad stories about that stuff. But anyway, in the end, you sort of pick and choose the bits that you do. I still do my client meetings. I love spending time with my clients. I love being the head of production where I'm talking to my, my staff weekly, bi-weekly about you know, what we're doing. So we're still delivering. And of course, I don't mind counting the money either. <laughs> Favourite thing to do. So does that make a bit of sense? Now, final thing before we leave this. How about if in this business we went from doing, let's do something a bit left field. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, let's, let's sell BMWs. Cars, let's say just cars. And what are we going to change in there to make this into a business that change, sells cars? This bit. You still got all these things. You still got an IT department. You still got a sales department. They're going to need a bit of tra training. They're not selling sauce anymore. They're selling BMWs or cars. You got a HR department. You got salespeople. You know, car salespeople. <laughs> they got a reputation. <laughs> you got some R and D. You got to find out what cars are worth selling. Uh, need the money to buy the cars to sell. So True enough. Yeah, yeah. Different finance model for sure. But the point I want to make here is that out of all this organisational chart. I've only changed one column, haven't I, effectively. Mm. There's a bit of retraining involved, but every business kind of needs all these things. So that's the other big takeaway for me, is there's always that element. Ta-da! That's the big thing for me. You see how enthusiastic I am because I was enthusiastic about it, yeah? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. How are we going for time, by the way? I'm getting on with it. Let's, um, let's get a bit of a speed on otherwise we'll all go to sleep. Me first. <coughs> Reputation for falling asleep at 9pm. Just I'll go. I'll lie flat. I'll just be gone. You can just leave. Uh, close the door behind me. Uh, behind us. So we stop talking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still talking to my sleep. Um, let's do a little bit on customers, yeah? I'm just going to, for efficiency, and so you can clarity, and you can talk about my customers, okay? My customers, um, and this is how, how accurate my avatar is for a client, yeah? And uh, so uh, he's um, 45 to 55. Um, he's a business owner. He's got, he's, he's happily married. He's got multiple children. Oh, and he'd be a nervous wreck for a start. I don't know about that, but uh, I know once with two, three, and four. Um, he's happily married. His wife does not involve herself in the business. I'm dealing just with this bloke. Um, he's got multiple, and this is service industry stuff, he's got multiple vehicles on the road. And he's got multiple technicians in whatever field of expertise they are, plumbers, tradies, arborists, pool cleaners, and uh, that, and, and he's got another thing about him, he's got a, a superior commitment to getting on with the business, 
and building this business. He wants a bigger business. And he's also got a, a fantastic attitude towards customer service. He wants to make the world happy. So uh, what else? He's also, got, he's also got a fabulous administration person or someone actually who runs the business. We've all come across them. They're usually a bit prickly, but they're, they're fantastic administrators. And they run the business. So I can think of in every one of my business bar one, there's someone really good who's, you know, you know, the head administrator, the office manager. And they're usually a bit difficult to get along with, but once you win them over, they're yours for life. So, and amongst the business, there's uh, some other person here as the admin. Now, if I can find one of those businesses, and they're a trade business, or some sort of service industry business, in the residential market, not business, uh, they're not B2B, they're not dealing with businesses, they're, de they're going out and fixing something in the house, and we talked about it in, in a little bit already, haven't we, with cleaning business, that sort of thing. So if you find me one of those and let me have, you know, I get his ear and he's in the, in, the, in the mood to grow his business, he wants more market, I've got a fantastic product for him. And I will win him over, you know, five times out of ten. And have him spending thousands of dollars a month with me. Um, and he'll be quite pleased about it. So when I say here, who do you want for customers, think long and hard about who your customer is. And more importantly, who you don't want. You know, I, I actually sacked a client back in 2019 and good client, paying a couple of grand a month, reasonable sort of bloke, I've had a beer with him or, or three, you know, but he just wouldn't return phone calls and it was time to renew the service and he was just like, just completely ignoring me, emails, phone calls, just treating me like dirt. So in the end I said, I'm sorry mate, we're not working for you anymore. Anyway, he said, oh, I'll come up, I'll fix it up now. I said, no, that's not the sort of respect I'm looking for in this relationship. I'm sorry, we've resigned. And long story short, after we handed off everything as gently and nicely as we possibly could, the council settled, is at one point he, he offered to come and fix me up. Now, this is a guy with a bit of an edge, yeah? <laughs> he said, I should drive to Brisbane and come and fix you up. I oh, punched me in the face. So, not the sort of client I want, is it? So... When, who do you want for customers? Do we want late payers as clients? No, we don't. Do we want people with a, with a streak of arrogance or, or, or a streak of, uh, of aggression in them? No, we don't. You know, do we want people that don't return our phone calls when it's really important we speak to them? No, we don't. So when you decide who you want for customers, think long and hard about who it is you want, what they look like specifically, and um, and more importantly, what you don't want. Then what distills from there as well is where are you going to find them? Where are you going to find them? So uh, a little anecdote about that, and I'll kind of try and wrap up shortly, is around that even um, one series of clients who, uh, so I've ended up with three clients. Oh, I actually included this troublesome fellow, um, but, we, but we let him go. But I was once upon a time how random is this? And this is kind of where, no, actually, I'll, I'll go to another story. I did a website for a, a fairly grumpy sort of bloke a, a few years ago and I did his computer repairs and actually he was a pretty smart sort of bloke but he had a bit of a bend against the world. But that's all right. He was likeable all the same. So I went over and did all this stuff and, and did a little website for his, his business. Now, one day he sold his business to a really big business, you know, where all of a sudden one became... He sold it to a portfolio where they had 25 of these operations. And they said to him, said, we don't see in your books here, in your, in your thing, you don't have a line item for advertising. You're not running any Google ads or any social media ads. He says, oh no, I don't do any advertising. I don't have to pay for ads on the, in, on, online. And they said, well, how does that work? I said, oh, this guy from John Naylor at eCentral. He's done my website, did my marketing, did my search engine optimization. I've never had to spend a dollar on advertising because the phone has just rung. And they go, where do we find this guy? So I got referred in. I did one of my marketing reviews. I think I charged 2300 for that one as well. Um, and then subsequent to that, after pulling apart their existing website, their existing marketing model, and there was a bit of a change in the air as well within the organisation. So we were able to, we were the rat in the ranks, we were brought in to shake things up a bit. And subsequently, that account became one that paid me in the vicinity of 20 grand a month. So old mate who paid me bugger all over the years became a very big payday. 
and um, and the legacy of that is still fueling yeah my lifestyle and you know even though we're now off that project you know I can put my hand in my heart and say we did outstanding work for that client we did outstanding we showed them week in week in month in month out that we did a fabulous job from now we got caught in the wrong side of the politics but in the meantime it still amounted to a really sensational payday uh, for the business so that's my anecdote about that so so where are you going to find them you just never know but I'm a big fan of being nice to people I'm a big fan of looking after people because I know that that goodwill will pay in spades give a fair opportunity make sense all right what have we got left oh we geez, we still got this many slides sorry but gee, I'm going your way Don I've been hanging around with you too much mate I'm getting along on the word <laughs> um, Study, let's talk about a little bit about um, uh, how generous are you because I think it's an important tangent. Now, I was a bit of a, I would give away my grandma. If people say, oh, thank you very much, that's amazing that you're giving away your grandma. I would do th lots of things for people because um, I got affirmed by, by affirmations. You know, I've always been a terribly generous bloke and at some point that had to stop, that had to be curtailed. No, there's a price attached to what I do and you've got to pay it. That's a really important step to understand. Now, I don't know whereabouts on the tangent. You know, I said here, I said, because I said it last time, I said, well, everybody is really generous, aren't they? And someone sat by the back and said, I'm not. <laughs> I go, all right, maybe you need to shift a little bit along the generosity timeline or, or, or continuum there to be a little more, a bit more generous. Because as I said, I work for one client, you know, tirelessly for a long time for not a lot of dollars, and it end up being a, a really big payday. In fact, it set me up. So that's that one done. And on the other one, there's, what on earth is Contra? Does anybody know what Contra is? Yeah. Yeah, all too well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll do something for you, you do something for me. I've got a problem with that. And uh, it's, and it's a real easy thing to fix because there's always this sort of unknown about Contra. Like there's always a perception in my brain when I do Contra for you, I think, well, at my hourly rate, that's sort of like this and that, and I kind of think it's like that. And the other person looking at you going, well, I know his costs aren't that, I, you know, and even though he's, it's sort of his re retail price and that, I know it's only costing 50 bucks when he's charging a grand. So, um, and it's only a bit of his time anyway, so that's all I really value it at. So Contra has this really poisonous, Brian's sitting in the front row smiling away. I did Contra here with my yoga instructor for the whole year. It is two individual t tax returns and this trust. I said, oh, I'll just keep coming to yoga. You know, I busted my shoulder. I haven't been to yoga for two months. <laughs> and as soon as I said that, he was on the bloody phone to me every bloody afternoon after free advice. <laughs> oh, it's cost me an arm and a leg and there's nothing out of it. <laughs> yeah, and, and a bucket shoulder to boot. Yeah, I can't go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Now, and so I've got a really, and it's an easy fix. It's an easy fix, and I've done it a number of times with clients where I do have, um, like for instance, I do a, a, a thing for a coffee supply business. So what I do is when we do work for her, I send her an invoice for the amount that that costs. And then sure, we can cancel that invoice, but in the meantime, I better get beans to that value turn up at my house, and they do. And if, they're, if I'm not in the market for beans, because I've also got plenty of coffee beans down there, then the invoice stands. So Contra is actually, yeah, Contra, for those who don't know, is best avoided. Brian's another example of the, the, the fact. And as I said, there's a real easy fix as you put an invoice amount on it. You exchange invoices. And if they cancel out, the GSD cancels out as well, yeah, boom, zero. So if it's same for same value, done on an invoice, everyone's square, everyone's happy. So beware of Contra like Brian is, <laughs> and me as well. Okay. Um, boy, oh boy. Okay, really quickly, these are the steps of starting a business. Who here actually has their own business? I actually have to go. Sorry. Oh, okay. You said it's only going to be about Yeah, oh, no, my apologies. <laughs> I, got, I got really banged on. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, I'll see you later. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to bang through these quickly. Who is, who's actually got their own business here? Yeah, so then Brian, you've got your own. So uh, the rest of you guys, just quickly, um, you know, the process is here. Uh, getting an ABN, you go online and register for that. Tax or tax invoice, there's that GST implication, talk to your accountant about it. It kicks in at around about $75,000. Um, company or sole trader. I, I've been told by my accountant that around about $120,000 plus or minus of taxable income 
that you're kind of better off to do a company structure. And I'm not even talking about a trust there. Brian's got an attitude. Probably going to keep it to himself. No? No, he's got to say it. I'd like to say that he must be basing it on the tax rate. Exactly. Yeah, because there's so many other things before you dive into a company or a partnership or trust. You've got to have a good talk to your accountant about it. Yeah, have a good talk to your accountant. It shouldn't just be based on yeah. your tax rates. Again. Exactly. So there, I've ended up with a company because uh, at 27.5 cents. Yeah, yeah, at a certain level. Um, and it's given me a bit more flexibility around the things I do as well. So that's a conversation. And point three is a conversation for your accountant, yeah? Um, register your business name online. You're going to need some software. Zero, my ob, there's something like Zoho Accounts and some other freebie accounting software. But accounts tend to love Zero because they can just go in the back end and export what they do and they can manage things and hey presto, generate your, uh, your, your BAS and all the rest of that. So Zero is a really good thing. Pretty good stock buy, in my opinion, too, by the way. Um, you need some business bank accounts. You have to balance your risk. You've got to think long and hard about what insurances you need and what you... St now, I've talked a, bit, a lot about my business. I've got no insurance. You know, I've got no professional indemnity. Now, how dangerous is that, really? But then again, I go, well, I've been 20 years and nothing really terrible has happened, and my clients are all lovely. <laughs> until they're not, hey Brian? But um, they're, they're lovely, so I'm unlikely, and if I'm careful, I'll get away without having a uh, need for a great deal of insurance. Now, if you deal with government, the first thing they're gonna ask you, you've got like five million in liability insurance. I don't. Um, spend nothing, spend nothing. You're starting a business, spend nothing. Don't set, send, give a dollar to anyone, because there's so many people wanna lay into it for marketing costs, websites, um, software, IT, um, Social media, uniforms, you name it. Everyone puts it. You'll get calls from the, you know, the radio and the newspaper. Still want you to think you're going to spend a dollar with them. Don't spend any money that you don't have to when you're kicking off. Start reading and seek out a mentor or get a business coach. Another really big thing. As I said I read 52 books in 18 months. Made a real big difference in my mind uh, in terms of my attitude towards running, starting a business or running a business and certainly was things that I said had the epiphanies and changed the way that I do it and now much more successful than I was. So don't wait 17 years to do that is my opinion, uh, as my advice, yeah? Um, business names and logos, I'm not even going to do that because we, we probably are running out a bit of time because um, other than that I think it's time to get started. If you've thought about get, starting your own business then I encourage it, I think it's a good thing. I said you can start at 65, you can start, start at 35, you start at 20. But business is one of those things where you can take staff with nothing and really make something. And particularly if you believe in it and you structure your business right, some a few of those things I've said, then you've probably a reasonable chance of success, yeah? Any questions? Is that useful? Yeah. Was I entertaining? Yes. A little bit? Okay, good. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you very much. Uh, I, I link, uh, what, I've got two people still watching on live. Don, you're so much more popular on streaming than me. You're like Netflix compared to my Stan, you know? Uh.